Greetings, viewers. This is going to be a response, or sort of a follow-up video, I guess you could say, to the Windows 7 versus Windows 10 and objective comparison video. You see, there were a number of people in the comment section, while the comments were still on, I've since disabled them because I've grown tired of reading it, who, to be quite blunt, thoroughly missed the point of the video. You see, the point of the video was to show you or show the people, and prove to myself, really, is Windows 10 better in a real-world, realistic experience, you know, like what I gave. So I took a three-year-old installation of Windows 7 and pitted it up against a Windows 10 installation that was basically fresh and on a better system, better equipped system. Slightly faster in terms of processor speed, and it's got the faster bus. The hard drives were identical. And if we take a look, I'm going to show you the prior data in just a moment. I have to pull it up first because I forgot to pull it up. Like it, boss. Yeah, here it is. There we can see the data. That's what it was. And you can see that while Windows 10 does offer improvements in areas, there are some where it just flat out where it should have improved it didn't. And that was really the big point of the video. So all of you people who are complaining, oh, the test was unfair, oh, Windows 10 is so much faster than Windows 7, your results are wrong, well, you know what? You saw me do the tests. The results are not wrong, the results are true, and you just thoroughly missed the point. But you know what? Fine. If these people want to be like, your test was unfair, well, let's do a fair test. Which is exactly what I did. I'm going to have to reopen VMware because apparently I closed it. Helps me prepare for videos, right? So we've got a VMware player right here. And we've got two virtual machines. One that's marked Windows 10 Preview. Yes, I know it's marked Windows 10 Preview. That's what I was using it for prior to this. And we've got a Windows 7 machine. Let's take a look at the hardware configurations. And VMware just burped. Okay, here we go. 4 gigabytes of RAM. Four processor cores using automatic virtualization. 60 gigabyte SCSI hard drive image, which is, by the way, stored on, I think it's this one right here. One terabyte Toshiba external hard drive over USB. Ignore that, doesn't matter. Ignore that. We've got it bridged to my, oh, I'm going to have to do that, don't I? I have it bridged to my gigabit Ethernet. I have USB 2.0, auto-detected, everything else is basically default. Basically everything's default for that. And then if we go into the Windows 10 preview, you will see that it's basically exactly the same. 4 gigs of RAM, 4 processor cores, automatic virtualization. That one's actually SATA, I didn't notice that until now, but it shouldn't make much of a difference. And ignore that. Ignore everything else, it's basically configured exactly the same way. The only thing I did to the fresh installations that I installed on these, I activated Windows 7, I installed VMware Tools on Windows 7. I might have installed VMware Tools on Windows 10, and I might, I think I actually probably did disable the fast boot because I think that's a useless feature, but in the interest of being truthful with you people, that's what I did. Alright, so let's have a dry run. These next two clips will show you dry runs with both the Windows 7 VM and the Windows 10 Preview VM, or the Windows 10 virtual machine. It's actually running the full release of Windows 10 at this point. And then we'll take a look at the results.
know some of it, I think I have it. What in the hell is this? I guess I haven't done anything. I could be four days. Here we go. Ridiculous piece of crap. You didn't even improve it. Look at that. Look how nice and fast that was. All right, how about the results? Keep in mind, these were the previous test results. I had said in a comment on the previous video that, you know, with a fresh install, if Windows 10 can only barely keep up with a three-year-old install, a fresh install of Windows 7 is going to absolutely wipe the floor with it. Did it wipe the floor with it? Well, if we take a look at the first run, I think you'll agree that it not just wiped the floor with it, it wiped the whole house with it. These results for Windows 10 are absolutely deplorable. Ridiculous. This is 2016. I mean, look at that startup time. Almost a minute and 20 seconds. Come on. 34 seconds to log in? Seriously? Wow. And you people thought that, if, that the test was unfair. I don't think so. Especially when you look at these results. Three minutes to open up a start menu. 17 minutes to open up a simple explorer window when you click on the file explorer. 11 minutes to open up Edge, a Microsoft Edge browser. I can understand that because it's a modern web browser. It's a modern application. Come on. The control panel took five minutes. Five minutes before I can go into my control panel. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's just a fluke. Let's take a look at test number two. No improvement. But I'm going to point out two things here. Really, the results are about the same, except for the startup time. You can see that it got really close, but it still can't beat out Windows 7. The login time negates any of the time savings. And look at that start menu time. 30 minutes. Almost 31 minutes to open up a start menu. A major feature. 30 minutes. I am about as stunned and disappointed as you are in that figure. All right, so let's take a look at number three now. More of the same. More of the same. So I guess in conclusion, really, Windows 7 and Windows 10 are not related to each other at all. Microsoft wants you to upgrade to Windows 10. My response is don't. You're not going to receive any improvement from it. You're going to get, it's going to get worse. And really, considering that Windows 10 is supposed to take the good parts of Windows 8, the good, one of the really good parts about Windows 8 was that it was so much faster than Windows 7. I can't prove that, but you can bet that there'll be a video about it, because now I'm curious. It's, it, was, it, it was just so much faster. And Windows 10 didn't replicate that? Come on. There's no reason for that. There are no technical changes under the hood that would result in this kind of a disparity between the results. It's just bad. And furthermore, for all of you people 
that are now going to probably take to the comments and complain about this and tell me, oh, well, you're wrong. In this case, Windows 7 was slower. Well, you know what? Prove it. Here is a user-submitted data tab in this spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is linked in the description down below. There are your directions. Prove it. Prove to me. Do your own tests. I encourage, strongly encourage you to do your own tests. To see for yourself, and, you know, if you want to argue with me, you could use it as a baseline. I'm really curious what kind of real-world statistics this is going to get. So, do that, and I'm going to say that if you didn't do the test, you have absolutely no right to tell me that my test was wrong. So, there we go. Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, provided they're not abjectly stupid, please do feel free to leave them down below. Please do do your own tests. Please put them in here so I can see them, because I really do want to collect some data on this. And until next time, this is CP666 signing off. Till then, guys.